Welcome to this Aerie Tech Talk Live here live from the Munich studio today about remote production. Um, in the studio with me is Kurt Schaller. We will, you will see him later. We both have lockdown haircuts, actually no haircuts. <laughs> so uh, we uh, hope for the excuse for that. So <clears throat> my name is Henning Redlein. I'm heading the marketing department uh, of the business unit camera systems and I'm heading the digital workflow department um, for the camera systems since many, many years, since we introduced the Alexa and talked a lot to many people about um, how to shoot digital and how um, workflows are. <clears throat> so, in fact, today we are also talking about workflows a bit different, of course, <clears throat> because the pandemic has, of course, accelerated um, new needs and the adoption of new technology for the filmmakers. We will talk about remote production technologies and filmmaking in the pandemic. So question is of course how do filmmakers use ARRI tools for remote production, how do ARRI tools work together and how do they work together with third-party tools. In our case a remote dolly from the company Motion Impossible. Now, um, those tools um, create a, or, uh, and enable a certain creativity or creativity and creative control um, from any distance of the location. So it can be a simple setup with one talent, for example, or it can be a larger setup with many talents, or let's say with camera motion, camera movement. And today, of course, we talk about the case where we have camera movement because that makes shots. Um, more interesting. On the other hand, the task is in the moment, you know, to keep a social distance between talent and the crew and hopefully also uh, between the crew members. So that is actually what it is about, but, you know, changing technologies means also changing behavior and I guess some of the achievements we have in this pandemic will probably stay. So we explore a new near set <coughs> workflow using the SRH. SRH stands for Stabilized Remote Head. It's an ARRI product. Um, we will see ARRI cameras, in this case Alexa Mini LF, a large format camera and signature prime lenses. And we will see the Agito, which is a remote dolly from Motion Impossible. Now, <coughs> people, you know, want to go back to set. They want to shoot, um, but they do not want to shoot with, with a webcam or with a simple camera. They want to use their favorite equipment and their favorite lenses. And of course, like in this shot, you know, they want to go close with the camera to the talent. And then comes the problem, how do you do that? So this is what we talk about remote productions. Um, it's about cameras, it's about stabilization, it's about movement, and it's about light. Of course, light can also be controlled easily. Actually, earlier than cameras, I would say, um, from remote. But we exclude today the light a bit because we will have a second tech talk on, on that topic coming up soon. So, but in general, <coughs> camera and light is the other gears um, you know, which people want to control. They can control them what we call offset. So if you talk about continents in between, so the gaffer is in UK and the DP is in Los Angeles. Or I had a talk to a AAC member and he said, well, you know, I have to interrupt the call for a minute because I have to set up my shoot. And the shoot was in Australia and he was in Los Angeles and I was in Munich. So a kind of, kind of weird thing, but possible. In our case, we had a shoot in our studio in Uxbridge, close to London, and uh, at Airy in London. <coughs> and so this I would call it was a near set workflow, you know, where we had um, the described gear, camera, um, remote had to control angles and movement, and um, the remote dolly. Of course, we had wireless focus control. This is nothing new, and of course it was all lit with ARRI cameras. All right, a different example than only social distancing, 
might be that one here. It is a new video from David Guetta. You will find that on YouTube. It's a cool thing actually. United at Home, the Dubai edition. It was also a remote production, but not due to COVID. It was on a helipad on a skyscraper and the artist um, was making his music and giving kind of the concert without audience. It was remote because the camera crew was actually sitting three floors lower. So they were like, I don't know, 150 meters away and they were controlling everything, every movement there um, from a different situation, from, from lower in the, in the building. Okay, so it was a breathtaking thing and please have a look. Uh, it's a good, it's a good con uh, concert, it's a good one and a half hours you can enjoy there. But there are many other cases, you know, there had been uh, the SIH used um, in, for the US Open. Um, there are documents, documentaries, excuse me, um, shot with it. And it's actually ongoing every day. So we hear that more and more that people are using the gear and um, putting their solutions together with our products. So this is an interesting application for us, of course. We have set up a, web a website. You will find that actually on ari.com remote solutions. So that is um, the place where you can find more information. Also this video we are recording here will be there in the next days. Now I thought <clears throat> we'll have a look on um, a video which shows actually the, the capabilities of the SIH first. It's a short video and by coincidence it had been shot <laughs> by David Bailey who we will talk to later um, in a couple of minutes. So maybe we, we run that first. It was shot from a boat and please look for the performance of the gear. So, but before we talk about this clip, I have to introduce our guests. So, Kurt Schaller is here in the studio with me. He's the product manager for camera stabilizer systems. One of those is the Trinity, for example, which we talked about a lot last year, you know, in 1917, shot by Roger Deakins and Semendez came out and Charlie Rizek was actually the Trinity operator. And we will see him later also for some seconds. Um, but <clears throat> he also, uh, so uh, Kurt also developed the SIH 360 uh, together with technical partners and cooperation partners. And um, so we will have him as a first guest. The second guest will be David Bailey, a director and um, director of photography, who shot the clips in UK I mentioned already. And he was working together with Jamie Hawcott. He was the camera operator. And finally, in the presentation, we will have Rob Druid, who is the CEO um, and co-founder of, of Motion Impossible, you know, the company making the remote dolly. But first of all, congrats to Kurt. Cool video, very stable. Over to you, please. Hello and welcome from my side. And yeah, that's a great shot. And I think this is really well done and it shows the capacity of this remote head. So before we digging even deeper into remote operation, workflows, let me just introduce quickly the part we designed at ARI and the products and the solution we try to offer for those kind of workshops, uh, workflows. So of course the first violin in our little concert here is playing the remote head. As we started to design the remote head, we had a very, very simple goal. We wanted to have a very high capacity, high performing device in a very, very compact footprint and in a very lightweight design. Another part of our design was also to make your life while setting up the remote as easy as possible. 
And so we have other product managers like Jean Frey, who took care about to produce these lovely dovetail plates. So for every Ari camera and for any length of setup, like with this lovely uh, signature zoom, we have uh, the right dovetail plate called the SAM plates. So you will find SAM plates for the Mini, the Alexa, the Amira. And we have even more plates in our fridge, in our white box. And if you want to learn more about uh, the SAM plates, you will also find very soon a tech talk from Jean Frey uh, showing you all these new plates. So by side hardware solutions and even simple solutions like counterweights, we try to make your life while setting up uh, the remote head as simple as possible. Another thing to make your, make your life as simple as possible is to use a cable you know already very well. It is the Elbus cable. And so what we did on this remote head and for the entire uh, environment we set up, we said we want to have just one cable. And it's always the same cable. So you're using the Elbus cables to set up the motors, to connect the motors to the remote head. And then on the other side, on the controller side, we did exactly the same. You're just taking always the same cable and you connect, for example, the ARI, digital ARI wheels, one wheel to the other, and maybe to the third one. And then from the third one, you go into the remote control. And out of the remote control, we get everything back again, only through one cable. That means we have tilt, pan, roll, focus, iris, zoom, everything is on one line in the end. Which of course then brought us to another point and said, wait a minute, if we want to have really remote operating, we need more distance. And then we said, okay, we can use the cable, which is good. And through the cable, we can go easily 250 meters. But what's about we using radio? So we designed this new external radio modules, which brings you or brings you away from the remote head up to 2.5 kilometers, which of course is very good for remote operating and any kind of solutions in this way. And now the good thing about this um, system is, or the bad thing on the first view is, if I can get the remote operating two and a half kilometers away from the head, but I want to have a focus puller, in the old way using a WC4, how can he talk to the head? So what we did is we made the same radio system also for the focus puller. So we have one version. If you want to have everything just through the remote control, going to the remote head. If you want to work the classic way, focus puller and the remote operator working side by side, there's a second version of this. So even your focus puller can be two and a half kilometers away from the head. So when you think this, into the next step, you say, wait a minute, then what we should have in future, and we're going to have in future, very soon we have a box like this, which talks Ethernet, which can allow you to have an easy setup in a stadium or inside a building and everything will go through the Ethernet. And once you do this step, then you may say, wait a minute, why can I not have the operator in New York while the remote head is maybe in Washington or in Los Angeles? and we just go through the internet. And this is exactly what we're going to have very, very soon to give you a box like this for on location, network, or going through the internet. And then we will definitely talk about a massive remote, uh, remote workflow. Um, of course, on the operator side, we try to offer as much as we can in to give you tools you are used to. For example, in this setup, uh, we're going to give you wheels. If you're more into the broadcast, we can uh, give you a digital pen bar. So you're operating the remote head like you would operate just a classic fluid head. Of course, we have different joysticks. We have this one. We have a joystick for broadcast operators that you can also, uh, you, got, you got also the roll axis in your fingers. Or for the really freaky guys, we also have a so-called microforce joystick. You just use your fingertip to control the head. And the other thing we do, and this is why we joined, to, we do this together, this show together with uh, Motion Possible, is we're working together with third companies because a remote head is only as fancy as the device who's moving the remote head uh, through the location. So. And I think the Agito Dolly is one of the most fantastic things I ever saw. And we should have a look at some of the things they shot with this lovely Dolly. 
So Hendrik, I'm going to hand over back to you and let's see what's going to come next. Yeah, that's a good cue. Thank you. <clears throat> Keeping everyone socially distanced on set is the name of the next clip we look, we will see. And if you please can run the video. Action Ajito. That's it. And if we can go in closer, Alex, so a bit closer in. Track in a bit. For... That's it. That's good. Okay. Um, and begin to wake up. Further, further in. And reach for the flower. Up. lovely yep that will that will be nice Great. i think we'll need to go up higher though so i do think okay. we need to take a break now everyone happy with that well, last take i mean within the restrictions of of covid i think it just it gives you so much freedom of movement especially in a quite a confined set which again you wouldn't be thinking of if you were weren't using a you know full dolly and track system or a jib or whatever you know, if, if it's too far over, just now I wanted Alex to bring it in six inches. Well, that was, took, what, 30 seconds as opposed to dragging the whole track over. Action dolly, very slow. Because it's so small, if you, if you look at the size of the dolly, you know, you can get it into tiny little, tiny little spaces. It's a good, what, foot 18 inches shorter than a, a regular dolly and a little bit narrower and much, much larger, of course. So if you've got to hump it up seven floors, yeah, that's, that's a piece of cake. That was quite easy. I just wanted to be a bit tighter yeah. and obviously we're working on primes and you know the easiest way of just to drop the yeah. on the column. It, it's a much more fluid way of, of choosing shots. You know you feel you've got a lot more to, to choose from. It's giving me the maximum creativity. And I really think that once people see it and begin to realize its possibilities I think it's gonna I think it's gonna really catch on. I think it's got amazing potential, absolutely amazing potential. Cool. So I welcome David Bailey in London. Um, David, thank you for joining us. Um, my question would be, let's talk shortly about the, the boat video. So how did the working with the SIH feel for you? Please describe a bit your experience with it. Yeah, I've used the SIH 3 and 360 on a number of different platforms. I started off using it on Russian arms, on very fast cars, which showed me how incredibly stable it is and how, how very simple and light it is. Obviously, one of the great things about it is the ARRI functionality, the L bus that Kurt's already talked about, the fact that you know it all joins together and works together. You don't have to have extra cables. Um, since using it on Russian arms and cars, I've used it on boats, as you saw with the, the video uh, there. I've even put it on aircraft. I've filmed out the back of um, US Marine Corps C-130 uh, aircraft with the ramp down. It's not a gimbal you want to bolt on the front of a helicopter. It's not intended to do that, but it's very good in the back of an aircraft where you can lower the ramp and film out and have the stabilization. So yeah, it, it, it's great. And a, a lot of my work is um, working on my own in quite remote, challenging locations on documentary work. And the other great thing about it is you can, if you need to, you can rig it yourself. You know, I'm about to take this one up to the Arctic on an icebreaker in a couple of weeks and it'll only be me there to operate it so and you couldn't do that with a normal big uh, chunky gimbal no lovely bit of kit cool 
Now, um, let's talk about the demo clip we, we just saw. So maybe you can uh, elaborate a bit how did these videos come together. So how, what, was the, what was the idea? And please talk about your experience as a DP shooting in remote. Right, well, um, I was kind of lured down to um, Ari in London by, by Rob. Uh, turned up in the morning and it was a bit like uh, being in a, a sweet shop, a new kid in a sweet shop. I had so many things to play with. We had two Agitos, two SRH 360s, we had two Mini LFs, a couple of boxes of lovely signature primes, which is very nice. We had an actor. We had um, a very cramped and rather dingy bedroom set, which you saw in the video there, uh, which was a bit of a challenge. I mean, I think it was designed to deliberately be a challenge. It was very, very cramped. There was not a lot of space. Um, it was, uh, I was given a couple of fairly low wattage practicals to, to light it with. Um, and the challenge was to create across one day uh, five different sequences that showed how we could shoot uh, in a COVID safe way with the Gito and the SRH3. Uh, we, we did a little drama sequence like the one you've just seen. We did something a bit more uh, with a bit more action in it with the act of running. We did a very short music video and we did two kind of car commercials. We did one where the car's stationary in the studio and one outside where the car's actually moving. Um, but the, I, I think the, the thing that was the biggest takeaway for me was that I didn't know anybody there. I mean, I met Rob before, um, but we had this incredibly talented group of people. I mean, two kind of legendary operators. We had Jamie and we had Charlie, Charlie Rizik. Um, we had a couple of great Agito drivers and uh, Alex and, uh, and Sam, um, uh, J uh, Jamie's uh, son. And we had a couple of very good first ACs, but we hadn't worked together at all. And I'd never used the Agito. I'd never, only ever seen it at BSC. And I think that the important thing was we managed at the end of the day, this disparate group who'd never worked before to work with these tools and produce uh, five quite you know, acceptable little cuts of work without any kind of planning. It worked really well. And we realized that we could actually get camera close to the talent, we can move it fast, we can do a lot of things um, with, with, the, with the right people and the right equipment. So I, I, I found it a very, very interesting and rewarding day. Right, people leads me to Jamie. So Jamie, what is your take on, on those days in the studio? It was really, really good. I mean, like, like David said, it, 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 uh, it just worked so well um, from the very word go. Uh, the, 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 you know, the main, the main purpose of the thing was to demonstrate, you know, if you're in a, in a COVID situation where you wanted to be remote and keep away, you know, that you could still do beautiful, smooth, very steady, very controlled movements in, as Dave says, in a very confined space in that little bedroom. You saw the camera coming around the, the back of the bed, but nobody within 10 meters of, of, the, uh, of, of the artist we all, as you saw, working outside. And it's absolutely brilliant that, that from my point of view, from a camera operator's point of view, the head is, it's beautiful. It's, it's so responsive, it's absolutely on the nail. Um, we were tracking just on an old bit of carpet, you know, it was a very, very cheap little um, set. So the dolly was straight on the carpet. We came, were coming round the corner with the, the dolly in a, um, a, a, a circular mode, you know, the, both the front wheel and the back wheel were steering. So it was coming around really, really smoothly and going right in close um, onto the onto the artist's face. So very, very clever. It was it was great. It was, it was very, very good. I was most impressed. OK, so David, what I would like to know is how is it for a director? I know you were the director of photography there, but kind of also the director of the film, if I understood it right. So how is that feeling if you are not close to the talent? It was it, it was very interesting. I mean, we were making basically we were making up the narrative as we went along. It, we weren't working to a script. So I was actually doing quite a lot of talking in a way that I wouldn't do, obviously, if we were recording uh, live. So I was talking through the take. So it did mean that I could kind of get the talent to do to move in a certain way, move slightly to the left or the right or whatever. But it didn't seem to matter that we were standing, as as Jamie says, you know, 10 meters away. Um, 
we had the image on the screen. We felt, you know, I felt that we were as close as we wanted to get a couple of times. We were really close. I mean, I imagine, you know, just like, you know, 50, 50 centimeters probably away from the, the actor's face, it may be even less than that. So it was not it was not a problem. Um, I think the key thing is, though, that coordination between the Ajito operator and the, the head operator, because uh, I, I mean, I do a fair bit of aerial work and therefore I'm kind of used to operating cameras remotely when I'm not actually looking through the viewfinder um, and, and with my, my shoulder right by the camera. Um, so I'm used to being displaced. But I think the great thing was that, you know, with uh, Jamie and Charlie operating the, the heads and, and uh, Alex and Sam on the actual Ajito, we managed to together work as, we were, as if we were absolutely as close as possible to the talent. And I don't, the other thing is, I think the talent, it was quite, quite interesting was, I think the talent, a um, very good little actor, and I think that she um, actually kind of worked quite well without too many people around her. You know, there wasn't a, a dolly grip and an operator um, right in her face. There was just this kind of inanimate camera, and I think that gave her a bit more freedom. Okay. I have to say that there just came a question in, which is better than my next question. <laughs> So I will swap those. And the question actually is kind of to you both, maybe also to all three. Do you think that remote production will continue to expand in the future? This comes from Harry. I don't know where Harry is, but I think it's a good question. So do we, are we going to see that also in the future in a post-COVID time? Hi there. Um, I think I win the Lockdown Hair Award, by the way. Uh, anyway, <laughs> um, well, I mean, obviously we made a remote tool for the future. Uh, this is why we made the, the dolly in the first place. Um, I think the COVID only enhanced the need for remote filming. And I think now people's perceptions are starting to change about how you work in a, in a workflow on a set uh, and on, on all, all different filming aspects. Uh, so hopefully, for me, it's here to stay. I think it, as you know, we found out on the day of filming, it is a really nice way of working. You know, it's fluid. You can change your shot very quickly. The, it's a director's dream for being able to just try different shots out. You don't have to be specifically stuck in, in one trajectory if you lay down track. So it does give you that fluidness to, to work in. And, um, yeah, I'm pretty confident that this is going to change the way people start filming in the future. Um, and obviously that will enable sustainability going forward as well. So um, being able to be more sustainable on set is obviously going to be a big thing for the future as well. Okay, <clears throat> so I would suggest that we see a second clip. And the reason for that is that, you know, we had this bedroom scene and it was slow, it was nice moving, uh, it was a good framing, but it was slow. So what happens now with that kind of technology if the action is fast? So if somebody's running, jumping, dancing, and so on. So we are gonna see that in the second clip. to do here is almost like you have to you have to hit that mark exactly okay so rehearsal and action it worked quite well with the the Ajita Karen going round so once you've got a gap you can walk off two one action She's stopping now. We've got 
got this big space here, so we were trying to see what we could do with the Agito and a bit of speed. Um, and it's worked really well. And I think what's really good is the combination of the SRX 360 and the Agito, because this actually takes out any kind of slight bumps and things. The stabilization is really good. I mean, we've got the, the use of the Agito and speed on the run. If we stick on the 47 and then use the tight radius round, that will give us a really nice cutting point. And, and eye height as well. That's lovely. Everyone, like, once you see the Agito, you think, like, oh, speed, fast tracking, fast shots. But, you know, it's, it's just to show how versatile the rig is and even comes to doing these creeping shots like super slow movement, precise, very lovely starting and stopping uh, points and uh, it's amazing. I'm, I'm in love with the thing. And you look at the platform, you look at the kind of movements that the Agito allows you to do and it's, it's, it's the same as a dolly really in terms of the grabbing or moving in any certain direction and it's combined that with the tower that you have on in terms of booming and settling on, on your camera height, it it's becomes like an incredibly efficient and versatile tool. I uh, mean, I'm mainly used to using the SRX3, which only goes around so far, then you have to kind of bring it back again. So it's been really useful to have 360, because it means that when we've been spinning around and driving it around, I can concentrate on the shot without also having to kind of think, how many times have I gone around and is it going to hit the stop? In these times now we're dealing with the restrictions that we have on shoots and remote operating and suddenly how the G2 can, can be the absolute incredible answer to, to, to deal with these restrictions. You'll get the G2 in and suddenly you know you can, can go back to execute the shot list as you had it planned to start with. It's just the flexibility of the rig and where you can place the camera and the shots that you can do on the fly quickly, efficiently, incredibly quiet. Uh, I, I was blown away with how quiet the rig is, uh, it's, yeah, it's incredible. Um, I'm definitely going to be pitching this on my next shoot, for sure. Yeah, I would like to mention that also to a filmmaker who was shooting very close by here like three weeks ago and I saw the DP office running to the camera and talking to the talent and running back and actually wrong. So what they did and what, what is possible um, is really great. Jamie, uh, I think it was your first time shooting uh, remote, if you so want. How was the difference, especially in terms of operating? I saw you um, um, having the wheels um, also in the hand. So how did that feel compared to an airy, um, airy head? Well, I mean, I've, I've been an operator quite a while, as you can see from the color of my hair. And, and I've used geared heads quite a bit and I've always enjoyed geared heads um, but it's and then lo it's lovely it's just so lovely to have the control um, total control and to have it in this situation where you're totally wireless I mean uh, it's 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 such utter freedom it's brilliant um, the heads of the, 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 the controls of the head are just perfect it's as I said earlier it's so responsive and it's so accurate and don't forget of course like on this head you've got um, not only the ability to do 360 without getting tangled in knots with the cable uh, but it's also you know very very well stabilized so it's just brilliant and you probably noticed in the film there uh, as the dolly was um, with, a, with the fairly tall tower as it went quickly around the corner you could see it leaning over and you think well, my that's a bit of a problem but it isn't because it because the, the way the dolly is built all, all the weight is very very low down the batteries and everything the center of gravity is extremely low um, and and the um, stabilization of the head compensates for any lean, so it just holds the horizon, so you get no wobble whatsoever. It's just, you know, it's very, very clever, very, very clever tool, and it's, and it's, I mean, it's, it's like flying a, you know, beautiful aircraft. It just does everything you want it to. Uh, you can't, you can't ask for more than that. It's brilliant. So it seems that maybe remote shooting goes away, but the technology stays, and there's just more tools. You know, if you can do that kind of movement with a small crew and remote controlled. Actually, there was a question I directed also to Kurt, who's over there. Somebody was asking, what about repeatability? So can you repeat moves? Can we repeat moves with the Agito and or with the ASIH? Or how is that? Yeah, 
Um, yeah, well, you certainly can with you certainly can with the headphone. You oh, beg your pardon. Off you go. Okay, sorry. Yeah, that, that's okay. But this is exactly why, for example, we're working together at the moment with Agito because this is one of the the points we have on our to-do list. So one part is that we want to enable that we can control some of the Agito movements. For example, if the Agito is on a track and we want to have just a single operator, so he could use pedals to drive the Agito left and right on tracks and up and down. And on the other hand, for example, if we have a classic setup, one Agito uh, dolly pilot and a remoted operator, that then the Agito will help us to record the entire uh, movement, including the, of course, the movement of the dolly, the movement of the head, plus focus iris zoom. So in the end, yes, this is one of the things we do together, or working together with Motion Possible on, to have this complete recording capacity very, very soon. Because I think this is the lovely idea about working together with partners on a solution, not just on a product. We try to work on a complete solution. Yes. I, th I think we, we, the other something? thing is to, to remember is we, that the SRH3 is not just a remote head. It's got the S in the front, the stabilized. And this is where it really pairs up well with the GITO because we were working on quite a nice flat floor in the Ari uh, area. But outside, um, it was rougher. And also, as Jamie says, on the carpet in the little set, there was a lot of sort of movement. Um, and normally, if you just simply had a remote head on top of something like the Ajito, it would be unusable because the actual image would be wobbling. You'd see the moves. But because the SRH is stabilized, it's a really good sort of partner with the Ajito. So it means that you can come off. Uh, you, you know, you don't have to think of laying absolutely flat tracks. You can kind of use whatever surface you have and the combination of the, the uh, stabilization. And the Ajito itself has different uh, suspension systems for it. Um, and so basically, yeah, it's, it's great. You can kind of um, take it off, off, the, off, the, um, off the tracks. Yeah, I did some tests at um, the BBC's studio in um, Elstree in North London uh, on the back rock set of EastEnders. And it's, it's a, it's a you know, realistic composite set with uh, a, a tarmac roadway. And we took the Ajito uh, down the road on just very crude a tarmac surface, no preparation whatsoever, and followed a couple of people down through this market scene. And it's just perfect, it's, it's brilliant. No preparation whatsoever, you just put it on the road and off you go, job done. And you can use longer lenses. Don't forget about this. Yeah. That's, I think, a, 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 yeah. a key point. If you have a stabilized head, you can use focal length, longer, like this lens, which is huge, and you don't have to worry about it. If you can, yeah. you know, if you can leave a, a, a zoom on, if it's more practical, not everybody's yeah. uh, cup of tea. But you know, you've, you've then got you know a much greater range. You don't have to, you don't have to uh, do any lens changes, so that can save you time. Number one, and the other thing again, coming back to the COVID um, workflow, is you don't have to ask the assistant to go into the set to change lens. There's no need because you get a zoom lens. So again, we can keep the set clean, we can keep it as a green zone, as a safe zone. And as you also pointed out before, that even the actor have more privacy and he can go deeper maybe in this, in, in this acting itself. So I think this is also even future a very nice thing to have. If you have a complex scene the actor have to work through, it's, it could be a very helpful thing that you say, don't worry, you're going to be alone. There's no need to have 10 people around you which is, I think, a, a good offer. Can yeah, I, hey guys, I, 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 I okay. just go, go about, uh, changing the lenses? If you do need to change the lens, you still don't need to go in to change the lens because the Ajito can simply reverse away from the talent to the AC. And then Sorry, but that's very true. <laughs> the other thing I, like I was going to say, I, I don't know whether this is the right time um, to mention it, Henning, but um, we spoke the other day about the, the safety aspect of, of using, you know, a remote, a remote situation, especially, um, you know, if you've got uh, fast cars and, you know, action or trees falling down or anything like that. Um, it's just, it's just, it's so relevant at the moment. You know, we've there have been a few nasty, very nasty accidents over the last few years, which we certainly, you know, want to have, want to avoid. And, uh, and it, so it's great to be able to have a camera that you can move and control uh, at quite some speed, the Gito can do up to about uh, was it 28, 30 
miles an hour, uh, Rob. It can go it can go very fast when you want it to, and you can have cars rushing by, you know, as cl as close as you like, um, with you know, with nobody in any any closeness or n any dangerous situation. Very, it's a very very good point to remember if you're you know planning stunts and stuff like that, and to be able to get exciting shots on the move. So I think um, actually I prepared a video of uh, a BMW commercial shoot. Let's turn over on the street and action Ajito. So we'll go right into the um, BMW logo. Action. And come to a halt there. The Ari 360. Being, being a fairly lightweight head, even though it can take quite a big payload, it does mean that it seems to be ideal for working on the Gito. I definitely use it for tracking shots that are slower than I'd normally use, say, on a Russian arm and a, and a, and a pursuit car. Um, and I think that means it opens up a whole range of shots that are quite useful to do, but that you want to get really close to, really wide to, and that in a safe environment, which you just couldn't do with a, with a car. The safety thing is one of the things you've got to remember. You can put this thing in places where you couldn't safely put, you know, a camera and a dolly, especially if you're tracking fast next to vehicles, that, that sort of situation. It's got wonderful control, you know, it's, it's beautifully smooth, very quick, the wheel changes, we've used three different types of wheels I think today, very quick, for about two minutes to change the set of wheel. It's, it's amazing, it's a wonderful bit of engineering, I commend you all, it's, you've done a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant job. I have one question to Jamie again. Jamie, is something missing if you talk to a computer instead of changing or moving something mechanically no not just no not, by it, so? not at all in, in in my in my estimation the only thing that i would say i miss about not working on a dolly is the fact that when you're sitting on a dolly and you're doing moves you can actually you can actually feel you know that you feel the g-forces you feel when you're accelerating away and you feel when you're slowing down and you can bring that into your operation and you and you do lose that on a remote dolly but that is the only thing um, you can still talk to your grip or your dolly operator using headphones quietly, um, so that's not a, that's not a problem. It's no, there's no, there's no, there's no snags there at all. Okay, okay. So <clears throat> now we have Rob. He, he's the CEO and co-founder of, of, of Motion Impossible, and my first question would be to him, but I hope that he have a short answer. How did you come from? <laughs> from a wildlife cinematographer to a person making a um, device like the Agito? Wow, short answer, okay. Uh, so I was one of the first people to pick up stabilization in the form of the gimbals, um, use it on Planet Earth 2 uh, quite extensively. And after I used uh, gimbals, I felt that freedom uh, as I did when I was underwater cameraman and I wanted to, create that freedom into a tool that could get close to animals remotely. Um, and so I decided to um, find my partner through, uh, who's Andy Nancolis, who's my business partner, through the internet. He's an RC car driver, but also a um, design engineer. And together we come up with the first version, which was called the Buggy Cam. Uh, and then since then, it's just evolved. Yeah, probably similar like the founders of Ari. They were also camera operator and then said, well, everything existing is not good enough, so let's do something better. Yeah, I um, knew the tool for myself, yeah. and I suppose if I needed it, I'm sure other people did. Yeah. So from your perspective, why is the Agito with the Airy head so successful, so popular? Yeah. Yeah, so the, uh, the, the Agito is a modular dolly system. It can be configured to suit your needs. Uh, you, as you've seen, it can run free roaming on, in the sports mode, but it can also go on track with tracks mode. You just change the drive ends. Um, what this allows us to do with the pairing of the SRH3 is also give our customers 
options. You know, you've got now the option of being completely 360, so being able to change the pan access all the way around. Uh, but then also you've got the operation, which is completely configurable to suit your needs. Um, so in sports environments, people might not want to have the wheels. They'll, they might want to have pan bars or they might want to use a stick. Uh, so there's just options there with the Aris RX3 that, that doesn't have with every single head out there. Um, and then obviously with what Kurt just mentioned in the future, uh, we have some pretty amazing uh, repeatable movement that's going to just add a layer of uh, intelligence to the, to the system that you're not going to be able to see in many other areas. Okay, so there was a question coming in. Um, and by the way, if questions are not answered, you know, we will forward them to the particular people and ask them to answer them. There was a question about the Agito, how does it behave in off-road? And I have a picture here on my screen, maybe we can see that, because you are doing an interesting um, test. You know, maybe you can talk about that uh, with the bird, the bird following the camera. Yeah, so the, the Agito has four layers of stabilization before it even gets to the head. So you've got the wheels, uh, on this one we've got the monster wheels, so you've got nice soft tires. Uh, and then you've got the suspension, which you can set up for any payload. We have uh, light, medium and heavyweight uh, springs and shocks for that. And then you have something called the VCOM Pro, which is a, a stabilizer isolator uh, that deals with the Z axis. Uh, and that is tunable completely to your payload. And then inside that you have then uh, soft line rubber that you can actually remove and put harder rubber in that. So you're completely configurable again to your payload. Um, so you tune tune that to your terrain and then you can find yourself you've got a quite a nice dampening uh, machine uh, to get to the, the stage of the remote head. Um, we, we have to do quite a bit of stabilization before you get to the, that remote head, especially when we're only about a foot off the ground. Um, so hopefully, um, yeah, it, it takes a little bit of tuning, um, but uh, you get some really good results. Okay, <clears throat> thank you. So there have been a couple of questions to you, Rob, about availability in Los Angeles, about specs and so. But I think um, those who put the question in should check out your website. Um, I would have a question to David and Jamie, it's actually both. Um, if everything becomes remote, wouldn't we lose the ability to improvise? <laughs> a good one. What do you think? So I go with no, absolutely. I mean, it, it's it's everything's a balance between different technologies. I mean, you have a you have a a drama set with maybe about this sort of sixty people on it, and then you sometimes have a documentary. We've got one cameraman on on their own in in some remote place, and it's using all the tools. It's it's matching the tools to the right location to tell a story, whether you're telling a documentary story or a drama story. Um, so I do think that um, uh, we still need those shots that are uh, where you've got the camera on your shoulder and you're looking through and you're able to adapt. Because one of the things I, sh I sh should say, to be realistic, um, the GTO and the SRH3 are great, but it does depend on, it's much harder for that system to work like that if your actor, your talent decides to go a bit freeform and leaves the mark behind. Like we we were great with our actor, we got her to hit the mark and we could work with it. But obviously it is a bit more difficult. So there will always be um, situations where you need the instant uh, uh, adaptability of, of actually having, um, uh, you know, uh, an operator with the camera, hopefully when the pandemic is over. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> there are a couple of questions to Kurt and I pick one of them um, because I've personally found it the most interesting. But there are questions on remote controllable via RF or LAN, but maybe we can do that in written. What I find interesting is with the stabilization, to what extent could you shoot close up in macro filming and have the camera moving? That's a very good question because that means when you're shooting macro, everything should be very, very slowly. Uh, so uh, that's quite an interesting question because we went the other way around. We did uh, extreme long lens shooting, like a thousand millimeters. But I think you're reaching some. There's a point you're reaching the same issues, and it's all about that the, the remote itself should be moved very, very smooth, so you can keep the frame. Uh, to control it was quite easy because. Um, 
the good thing about the wheels is you, you can ramp them down. Technically, I can put the wheels into a setup that I need 100 turns to do maybe four centimeters movement of the head. So that means you, you can turn quite fast and the, move, the head will move super, super slowly. Uh, and this helps, uh, honestly, to do macro or to shoot with very, very long lens. It's just, uh, yeah, set the wheels in this way to under crank the wheels. And that's the solution. And the wheels anyway is the solution because the wheels allows you a very, very precise uh, movement. And when you stop, the head will immediately stop. If you start moving the wheels, the head follows immediately. So you've got uh, a very, very, con a very, very good control, which also allows you, honestly, to improvise, by the way, because I think uh, you can set this up so uh, organic that you just use it. You don't you, you completely forget about it using the wheel. You just watch the, the screen and just do your job. All what right. There were questions about what films have been using that technology. You know, you see that on the ARRI website uh, for the head and for the Trinity and all that listed their credit modules and, and you can look this up. Um, I would actually ask to London, to David, um, maybe a last question, famous last words. Um, so for the future, is there something you would like to see and to have from, hopefully from Motion Impossible, not from Ari, no, from bo both of us. So is there something you would be missing? Uh, yeah, the, the, um, I suppose the thing that I would like to see is, is something that was even faster. Um, and maybe able to cope with even rougher ground. I probably with a, a, a bigger wheel um, uh, wheelbase, so that you could go on really rough ground. I mean, there are times in some wildlife filming where you are on very rough ground. Now I know Rob has done some amazing wildlife stuff with Egito on uh, in Africa, but I just think that maybe the next stage up is something just a little bit bigger uh, with a with a more stable wheelbase that can go a bit faster. Well, David, maybe watch this space. <laughs> <laughs> All right. One super last question to Kurt, please. Um, somebody's asking about the delay um, affecting focus and camera operation um, between the remote units and the reaction of the devices. How fast does everything react? As long, of course, if you are on a cable, there's no delay on the radio, you won't have any delay. If you go through a LAN system, as long as you're in the same grid, like in a stadium, there's also no delay. If you, of course, go through the internet and we go from city to city, we faced about like eight milliseconds, 10. But this is hard to control from our side because it depends also about the routing, how the signal goes through the internet. Uh, and this is also something we look at, Ari, and that we uh, will hopefully uh, soon going to be able to offer you a kind of um, a control that you say, if you, I forgot my head in England and the operator is in London and the head is outside London, but we want to make sure that the internet connection stays within the UK and we're not going around the planet once till you reach uh, the head or uh, the other side of the communication. Uh, the other thing we did also in the communication is we prioritized uh, things. That means pan and tail axis and focus are highly rated. That means that will come first. If the iris comes uh, a frame later, no one will see that the iris was moved a frame later. But for us, of course, pan, tilt and focus have to be like this. And this is always like this. You won't see any delay for sure. Okay, good. And one more. So, and, and by the way, the questions which have not been answered, there are some, I'm excused for that. Please write them to the email address you will see in a minute. But one question would be to Kurt. I heard that you and Rob became friends and you have some plans. So what are your plans? Well, it can't be holidays, right, Rob? So we will not go to Bath and have a good week there and having some good chin. Now, again, I think the plans I talked already about is that we want to come up with a solution that both products are working perfectly and smoothly together. So for single operator uh, operation, single operator operation, and as I said before, uh, that we have the ability to record moves and just to play back them uh, as much as you need them. And um, 
And of course, whatever Rob does, and if you want to go faster and bigger, we are happy to join him to even drive our head faster and bigger through Africa next time. Yes, maybe that too. <laughs> but again, I think the biggest what we're looking at is to make the setup easy, the operation easy, because we still want to be cameramen. I want to focus on the story I'm telling and the pictures I'm framing. And I want to forget about the technology I'm using. And that's uh, my goal. When we design something like we did here, you have just one cable, daisy chain everything together, and here you go. And this is exactly the level of Rob and I'm looking at that to make it as simple as possible and as creative as possible. And make a good movie. Yeah. Yes, please, David. Quickly, from my point of view, from an operator's point of view, I, I'm really, really keen that as many uh, grips uh, come on board with this because we, the operators, have a very, very close relationship with the grips with, to do with timing and movement and everything. And it's, this is a really, really, really useful tool. And I, and I don't want people to be frightened by it or anything like that. Guys need to get to get involved, you know, speak to Rob and, and when we can organize demonstrations and stuff. And I'll certainly help out to to make that make that happen. It's a really important point from an operator's point of view. OK, guys, thank you very much for the time. Um, thank you for the questions. Uh, we had a high participation. That's really, really cool. Please stay tuned. Interesting things to come. Stay healthy and thank you very much for joining. Bye bye.